Our first speaker tonight is the professor of the practice of molecular and cellular biology, director of the Derek Bach Center for Teaching and Learning, and director of Harvard X. And without further ado, please welcome Rob Liu. So, in May of 2012, when Harvard boldly joined with MIT to found edX, even though there were enormous aspirations in terms of what this might mean for the dissemination of knowledge in the world, I think none of us dreamt of what the potential impact could be, and still even today, we're still unfolding and starting to understand what the possibilities might be. So that in the scant year and a half that has elapsed, we are all in this environment now where the notion of the MOOC, the massively open online course, is written about in every newspaper you can think of, it's blogged about, it's tweeted about. And one of the questions that has arisen is what does this mean for brick and mortar institutions like Harvard? What does it mean for small um, um, liberal arts colleges? What does it mean for two-year two -year colleges? What does it mean for higher education at large? So a word that has been used fairly frequently is that this is in fact a moment of disruption, a term that has been coined and primarily focused, for example, on industries that are completely upset and where things are disrupted and something new entirely replaces that which was. Now, I would argue that higher education is not like cell phones. Higher education is not like steam engines. And perhaps a better way to think about this is that this is not so much a moment of disruption, which to me sounds a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit destructive in some ways. What this really represents is a moment of inflection and ultimately a moment of potential transformation. And it is up to us to really look at what the brick and mortar experience is in higher education and really drive this in the direction of transformation. But transformation indeed may not even be the best word. I would argue that we are in a moment of evolution, of digital evolution. The explosion of digital resources is changing how we access knowledge in a way that despite the internet being more than two decades old, is somehow just coming to fruition now in higher education. So what is then the ecosystem that really is higher education? As a biologist, I think, in these terms? And how do we understand the complex interconnections that really reveal for us what the potential might be for this uh, um, digital evolution? So let's think about the university, right, and how we understand the university today. Enormous resources flow into the university, and fantastic things hopefully flow out. In the traditional model, what the university gives to the world, the impact of universities like Harvard on the world, focuses on scholarship and research, being a critical component, and of course, what we also share with the world are all of you, namely the students that come from Harvard, the undergraduates, the graduate students, and the professional students. What we are now seeing in this remarkable change in what we can do with education, how we can communicate online, the kinds of interactions we can support online, is that all of a sudden, more than ever, we are now much more interconnected with the world. So that now we have the opportunity to take what Harvard does in terms of teaching and learning and share that more broadly with the world. But this is not simply a broadcast model. This is a model where the world, in turn, feeds back to Harvard enormous insights, where the School of Public Health can create new case studies built on 35,000 students taking a course from across the world, where individuals in Mexico City that are interested in Puritan poetry can participate live with high school teachers and Harvard students in a live event in real time. So that in some ways, the flow of knowledge becomes a bi-directional cycle, and what we then see is the opportunity to bring that more deeply into what happens in the Harvard classroom, to really transform what we do in person based on a much richer series of connections and a circulation of knowledge, of insight, of, and perspective from the rest of the world. So that one might argue that universities have always played 
critical roles in a network, in a landscape of knowledge throughout the world as we understand it today. But what we can now do is really change and deepen what it is we are doing with the rest of the world. So for example, we are now in a situation where our relationship with publishing is changing nearly every other day. The material we are creating is that the new textbook of the future, perhaps, and publishers are wondering how can they relate to universities now in a world where there's a digital platform that allows for the sharing of knowledge like never before. Likewise, we're seeing opportunities where there are governments around the world that want to utilize this available knowledge, this available educational content to, for example, train the thousands of high school teachers in Brazil that are desperate for professional development where with one single course, one can train in biostats more students with the offering of one course than the School of Public Health has done with the offering of that course over five years. So all of a sudden now, governments are talking to HarvardX and to other projects like HarvardX, how can you partner with a university to disseminate knowledge more broadly? Private enterprise, lifelong learning is tied to professional development Lifelong learning now has meaning like never before. And how do the businesses that grow up around software, around educational content, and the richness of educational content really transform how knowledge is disseminated in the world? How do we interact with the pre-college audiences, K through 12? How does what K through 12 has learned about engaging students inform how we think about engaging our own students and how might math modules built in Harvard X transform the advanced placement training in mathematics around the country? How can digital resources change what cities and communities do? In Alston, we are reimagining what the community center looks like based around an on-ramp for the community to the information age. So that once again, these digital experiences do not replace the in-person, they transform them in a really profound and deep way. And finally, in the knowledge landscape, public media. As Hollywood talks to us about, well, you have all this fantastic content, this notion of edutainment is now exploding like never before. How do we connect these things in really profound ways? So that the university has always been at the center of a remarkable network of knowledge. And today, what we are now seeing is that more than ever, we have an opportunity to assume our role as a critical node, as a critical provider, as a critical partner in the dissemination of high quality content throughout um, the knowledge landscape. But it is up to us to seize this opportunity, to do it right, and to engage the world more closely than ever before. Thank you.